Lyndon Baines Johnson was elected to public office and served at the seat of power at one of the most crucial times in the history of the United States. In the early years of his career, Johnson's campaigns were financed by Hot Oil and Brown and Root Construction Company. Public records disclose that in 1947, H.L. Hunt signed over mineral rights to Johnson, oil leases owned by Hunt. Johnson's support of the oil depletion allowance would have been a conflict of interest. According to the Dallas Morning News, Billy Sawlest has told a grand jury that with Lyndon Johnson's help in the early 1960s, he generated $21 million a year from his illegal cotton allotments and other businesses he set up with Johnson. Part of the money went to a slush fund controlled by Johnson. Billy Saul claims that he once delivered to Johnson $500,000 in cash stuffed in a suitcase from that very same trust fund. According to J. Evitz Haley's book, A Texan Looks at Lyndon, and the congressional record of September 1st, 1964, Johnson was once accused of voter fraud. In an election race for Senate, from one election box at Precinct 13, the names of the voters for Johnson were all in alphabetical order, having the same handwriting. This later became known as the Box 13 scandal. Johnson became known as Landslide Linden, winning the election by only 87 votes. Johnson became close personal friends with President Roosevelt. Johnson had campaigned with Roosevelt on several different occasions. Johnson teamed up with Sam Rayburn, who at the time, as Speaker of the House, was one of the most powerful men in the world. With Johnson at his side, Sam Rayburn was one of the key figures behind the building of the atomic bomb. Rayburn was able to raise $400 million from the private sector. He then had Congress appropriate $2 billion, and he didn't tell them what he was going to use the money for. The money was used for the top secret Manhattan Project, the building of the atomic bomb, which brought about the ending of World War II. The post-war world was dominated by the conflict between the United States and the Soviets. This was the beginning of the Cold War. The world was shaken by communism. The power structure of the United States, the invisible government, the military-industrial complex, including the intelligence communities, were struggling for their positions after World War II. At that time, Johnson as Majority Leader and Rayburn as Speaker of the House were controlling these agencies' purse strings. Johnson was in a very unique deal-making position. Johnson formed close and personal relationships with the heads of these different agencies. He would later call upon them when he needed political favors. There are dozens of military bases in Texas alone. Johnson's home state. Over the next 10 years, the Cold War was at its peak with Russia. Castro took power, the Korean War was fought, and the CIA had begun covert activities in Southeast Asia that would eventually lead to the Vietnam War. The CIA established its relationship with the Mafia. J. Edgar Hoover collected his secret files that he and Johnson would use through blackmail to serve their political interests. Johnson and Hoover were personal friends. They lived next door to each other in Washington, D.C. for over 18 years. During the 50s and early 60s, Johnson built a power base that he felt was unstoppable. Through the relationships that he had built, Johnson positioned himself to be the next president of the United States. This had been Johnson's lifelong dream. 
What wasn't in Johnson's dreams became his biggest nightmare. The Kennedys. Johnson hated Bobby Kennedy and the feeling was mutual. He felt that Jack Kennedy was not his equal and didn't have the experience to become president. Johnson and Rayburn were caught completely off guard when Jack Kennedy received the nomination for president at the 1960 Democratic Convention in Los Angeles. Some claim that Joe Kennedy had bought the election. It's the conclusion. It would be the best judgment of the convention to nominate Senator Lyndon B. Johnson of Texas for the office of vice president. Accepting the position as vice president was said to be the biggest setback in Johnson's political career. As vice president, everyone thought that Johnson would quietly disappear into the woodwork. Johnson had other plans. This is the story of a few people that were involved with those plans. New information has been uncovered that proves Lyndon Baines Johnson was directly tied to the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. You will hear for the first time startling new testimony from Loy Factor, one of the shooters, Madeline Brown, Lyndon Johnson's lover for over 20 years. Madeline Brown had a son with Lyndon Johnson in December of 1950. You will hear from Stephen Pegues, who spent over 10 years investigating the case, working closely with Billy Saul Estes. You will hear from Doug Caddy, the attorney for Billy Saul Estes, the man that has the secret audio tapes of Johnson planning the murder of President Kennedy. Their testimony will put Lyndon Baines Johnson at the heart of the conspiracy that murdered President John F. Kennedy. Mac Wallace was working for Lyndon Baines Johnson. They were also close friends. Direct evidence against Mac Wallace was revealed at a recently held press conference in Dallas, Texas, conducted by Walt Brown. Brown presented a report by a certified latent print examiner that had discovered a 15-point match between a fingerprint found on a box 